point, we would uh, probably do our um, session. That is the uh, panel session. So the panel session will be an opportunity for other persons who are also in the industry to also um, share. And then, of course, we get to ask questions, ask the people that have spoken questions for them to answer. So um, we need chairs. Thank you very much, Perry. Um, I'm Momodu Inu Noah. I'm popularly known as KBK Junior. I'm a music business executive, I'm a music producer, and music director. I have I've been involved in professional music business for 24 years, um, living in Benin City with my family. I'm also the CEO of Arc Music International and Proclaim Media Africa. Thank you. Put your hands together, please. Okay, Mr. Uh, <clears throat> all right, my name's uh, uh, Wilfred Brown Chinedu. Uh, like he said, when you have a brand, the brand takes over your name. Yes. Uh, I'm known as Smile Global. I'm a show promoter. Uh, I'm a content developer. Uh, we're into promotions too. Okay. Uh, we've done a couple of the uh major shows the big shows yeah the big shows around yeah, if we mention the name you would know <laughs> we've me... we've done gospel secular we've been on ay life for six years uh we've done the likes of we, we were part of content for tim goffrey so when you were talking about money it ensure it was part of what i was gonna say yeah you know and then the snatch the snatch that is going on yes on the ground see so you guys are blessed you know, you're so, going to be hearing some things uh we're just there we're all together in the music business. All right. Basically. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Energy. Hello. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Azama Kutubichku Stanley, but popularly, popularly known as Mr. Energy. I'm a label manager to Grafton Records. Um, we have we once have Mr. Tuki, but now we have Ida Hams on the label. And also, I manage a gospel artist, Paul Chisom. You guys may know him. And I'm, I'm also a promoter, so that's what I can say for now. Okay, so we are going to start uh, from um, uh, the speakers that have spoken. So if you have, do you have any, are there questions in, in the house for Mr. Uh, Ayo and Mr. Mike? Questions, anybody has questions that they want to ask before we begin to really define things? Questions, 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 questions. Okay, no question. Questions? Okay, question. Okay, so you tell us your name and then, of course. Name is um, Toby Lover. I just want to ask generally now, um, how cost effective is it to have a publicist? Maybe for, for an upcoming artist, is it like a, a yearly content, I mean a yearly contract or how is it done? Something like that. Uh, it's very affordable, but I believe in relationship so much. For us, we are in the industry to, to promote the gospel. So it's not about money. If we key into your vision, we will work for you very well. So you are the one to like. That place deserves a clap shot, right? Yeah, like if we key into your vision, you know, we'll work so for if you key into your vision, we'll work for you. That majority of the artists, after working with them, if the name is out, they change, and we understand. They jump, so we don't have issue with that. So it's not all about the money. So that's okay. it. Okay. Hey, um, have any more questions? By the way, the way you're smiling now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Faye. I work with Chocolate City Music. Um, I'd like to ask you a question, sir, about Alaba. My challenge has always been tracking Alaba because if um, you do digital marketing, you do all those type of promotions, there's still a way to track it, even if it is radio and TV. There's still a way to track it. So is there a particular way to track Alaba? Um, and mixtapes and all of those things. I can say, okay, uh, we paid for this thing and then it has gone to this extent. Okay, um, I understand the question. Um, when you're tracking it now, that means you're dividing, it goes into two. It's divided into two. There's the marketing, if you're talking of an album, then there is the uh, promotion, if you're talking about pushing your song, mixtapes. Okay, um, if it's for the mixtape, if you're tracking the progress, um, the truth is, the hard truth is, what was your budget? You understand? Because um, 
<laughs> Trust me, these secular guys, they drop money. I don't want to call names, but last year, one of the big names came and dropped five million. And with five million, you hear the song everywhere almost immediately overnight. <laughs> but then, if you drop 20,000, <laughs> and you, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being real, uh, and you, so most of the time, because of the funds that might not be so available, it might be um, a bit slower. Okay, there's a time whereby these things are made, they are pushed on the street from the wholesaler to the reseller, the reseller to the street guys, the street guys eventually sell it, the guys buy it, then people now start listening to it, they start getting feedback. Most of the time, the feedback we get is from the people we also sell to. You know, people come back and ask something like, ah, there's this mixtape I bought from you, there's one track there, people have been asking me whether he or she get album, that they like the song. We get feedback from there too. So on your own part, where you get is okay. Usually, like I said, Nigeria is large. Our population is high. So um, most of the time, you might not hear it. Somebody on the street who hears somewhere who knows you. That if you're fortunate to have somebody who heard your song and know you to call you and say, Ah, I just they had a song for street now. As I pass, your song did they play? And another way you could also do it is if if you trust. But trust is also important because you must trust the person you are working with. Because there are times whereby promoters look as they are, they are working, but it's as if they are not working. Uh, because um, as you are making, people are buying. And people that bought it might not know you to call you. They may like your song. Some may, may even start following you on Instagram or social media. But they may not know you to call you and let you know that, ah, I love your song. I bought your song, you know. So most of the time, it's okay. At times, you come to the office, you see the jacket, you see the paper. You know, actually, they did this work well at times uh, something i do with most, most, most of my clients at times i take a picture of all um the work and snap it and say so you know that okay this is not photoshop this is real and this thing we no chop them we push them out you understand uh, so something like that then but, but when the fund is high trust me it will spread faster because you might probably get more promoters involved and will push it faster He just scratched it. No, he did. He just told me there's no way to track it. Really. <laughs> so, I, I, there's actually a way to track but, but it. I told you. Need, I mean, I, I know most of you are so into. I know Mr. Energy does a lot of uh, uh, Malaba work too. So we'll let's we'll let's get let's make it to that so that we we'll know, so that we we'll know. We'll know. So she is saying she's asking, how do you track? And I think what he's trying to explain is. Uh, there's actually no way we can give you specific figures, right? Yeah, we can't give you specific. I can only tell you, okay, I made so-so amount of mix. Yes. And I made this quantity. Okay. But for you to track now, yeah. that's why I said, how much was your budget? You cannot give me 20,000 naira. I want to give you a track of how, how many streets can I cover with that? You okay. know why politicians spend money in their campaign. Okay. <laughs> you understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you give me certain amount, I can only tell you from my own angle, this is how much I made. Yeah. This is the quantity I made of this. I made social supply to social states. Yeah. Because we're not just talking about a certain place now. Yeah. It's nationwide. Okay. So maybe one of the ways to track would have been to tell you, okay, we shipped so so and so amount so to you Abuja. Snap pictures of we the cities so so and sent to you. Probably. I don't know if that works. Okay. Just to, I think um, Alaba needs to... Um, work beyond what Alaba is presently. Data is power. And not just for your customers, data is king. And I think you need to focus on cumulating data, main tracking and um, noting the areas where demands are. It will take you a step further. Imagine being able to tell like a Mike Abdul and telling him that we noticed that in so so say like Abuja, say like Asaba, we noticed that there's a lot of demand for your work. I don't know. It will come from accurately tracking. Data is king. There will come a time where this data that you seem not to pay attention to now will be required and you make a lot of money from it. So okay. I think you should pay attention. Have you worked with an Alaba person before? No, no, I haven't. <laughs> okay, then we call it data. But from, from, from uh, the questions she asked she asked and the tracking. She track it. We call yeah. it data. Okay, let me break it down. Um, I've had artists that um, I've given concert in Abuja because they embrace most of their song there. I've had artists, I won't mention them, this is a very big artist, 
who wanted to push a particular brand of song because she felt it was Igbo. It had a touch of Igbo. I'm like, why do you want to push it? That's a touch of Igbo that we have more Igbos in Christendom. And eventually, actually against the person's wish, I just loaded in one. This became a very hit track now. Pushed one. And that one, I started, we started getting more demand. People come, but there's this mix we bought too. There's one song there, people like Amwe Wello. They had to call the artist. I said, see, I keep telling you, leave that one. This track is actually getting more feedback. Look at the feedback we're getting. It's actually getting more. He said, at the end of the day, he did that. And that song became a hit nationwide. So we actually have our own data. We actually have pleas of people. I sent um, jobs to Abuja last week. Actually, I still have it in my wallet. But I don't treat it until the person has accepted that he has received. I know the kind of songs they want. Like someone in Abuja now, their preference in music is different from our preference in Lagos. That's the truth. Now, uh, um, for example, when I make a mixtape, there are some mixtapes I make that I don't sell in Lagos. If I sell in Lagos, it's maybe Island, some part of Sulele and Festac. That's the truth. Like, uh, when equipment was so, was there, even despite he's from Abuja, there are some mix I sent there. The guy called me, Must every mix have equipment? Which one is equipment? Equipment, I beg. We know, most of them are educated. Most of them are scholarly. So they have, they like this touch of um, foreign song or you sing in a kind of, so we get, we get feedback and we, but the problem is, will the artist listen? Will you be open to advice? That's why I asked you, have you worked with any before? And if you've worked with any and he didn't give you collected information, then that means you work with the wrong person. But I'm telling you that we collect information now. We okay. okay. So once I understand what you're saying, and I totally agree, but to an extent, it sounds to me like word of mouth. When I mean that, I mean actually computation of this. Things that could be sent out to the general public. Things that the global world can... Um, relate to, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It's, like, it's not okay. word of mouth. Okay, uh, let, let, let me come make, in. I, I think make, I know what she's doing. She's saying. Make data more accessible. accessible. Let's your clear, let the chocolate oh, to wait, person if I, come. If I work with her now, him now, yeah. oh, will I come oh. and make his data known to you? Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait uh, Mike, I think I know what she's saying. Okay, let me quickly share something, yeah? When I was, when we were writing a business plan for, when we were applying for some grants from the Tony Lumilu Foundation at Gospel Tainment. So we were applying for grants. So when we were applying for that grant, they asked us for data. We had to give them a verifiable data about the gospel music business for them to know whether it is viable or not to give us grants. Guess what? We collated data. So, so I think what she's trying to say is, let it be written, let it be available print, so that it can be represented in a, a pic, yeah, okay, I think so. She, it, she wants it represented in a pictographic form. So you can show me a chart and say, this is the concentration of gospel music lovers in this part of Nigeria, in this part of Nigeria. When I push mixes, this kind of mix goes to this part because this is the concentration. I think that's what they are looking. But let me, let's hear Mr. Smile. I think what she's trying to say is, either you like it or not, we're in the digital age. Alaba music was known way back as, like he said, the street music to reach out to the average, average, when I mean average Nigerians or average person. Now, what she's trying to say, for me as a businessman, what she's trying to say, she's trying to send me a business opportunity signal. All right? To say, apart from pushing out the music as Alaba music, now, create data to say, if I have, uh, let's say if I have somebody in Akwaibom who I distribute a certain thousands or hundreds of thousands of our, our stuff too. Now, tell the person, what is your reach? How many spread did you, do you sell in a week? How do people relate to this particular, um, this particular mixtape? So it now helped me to say, oh, in a week, this person in a choir bomb was able to sell 20,000 of this particular mistake that we just did. This person in Asaba 
was able to sell 30,000. So I now have it written in my stuff to say, when I'm doing data analysis, to say, oh, we have a fan base of 30,000 people in Aquibom. Trust me, when they say, let me say for instance, Smile Global Entertainment is a brand. We've had one or two people outside Lagos, outside the country who say, please smile, we're doing our event. We want to say, packaged by Smile Global Entertainment or produced by Smile Global Entertainment. Why? Because it now has a brand when they know, oh, it's packaged, produced by Smile Global Entertainment. They know these guys won't be involved in trash. They won't be involved in something shabby. You understand? So when you have that label, like, um, I don't know what your brand is, P-Man. When you have that sellout as P-Man, P-Mic, entertainment or something, yeah? When anywhere you go and you see that label, I'm sure your numbers are always there. And you know, oh, this is my sellout. Now you have a database. You know what your selling point is. You understand? That's what they are trying to... Uh, is your question answered? Yeah. So let me give you an example. Boomplay that I work for. As many, we have so many um, um, means of getting this data. For example, if you're an artist and you're open to getting this info, CP, some of the CPs that distribute for Boomplay know that these things are available. You come to us and tell us, we want to see the number, we want to see um, where this particular artist content is being consumed digitally, right? It helps you to streamline and know the areas where you can do concerts and you will get a crowd. Not just calling Jamboree in Lagos, where your actual fan base is nowhere near Lagos. Maybe somewhere in Aquibom. Maybe so, and you would actually get a sold out concert. It will make you to work strategically and work with purpose. That's my point. And it will also make you, I mean, we'll good business money. point, exactly. Okay. 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 Start. Um, um, I understand what, what um, the ladies are saying, and it's very key. I'll give an example with um, Monique from Spaghetti. Um, records now at the time i called Menka abdul i said in bini city eh, powerful is fire everywhere every street corner i had to call him i said what did you do monique supposed to be everywhere now but if i if we ask the street promoters from alaba to give us the statistics of how many copies were sold they can't tell us that's what we are saying and it is key if you want to track the data, if you want to track the, there are no, param are no parameters to track what Alaba does. Alaba has a system. Let's not say they don't have a system, but the system is internalized. And what we are asking for, the engagement is that it should be collaborative from the production to the promotion to the market and distribution. It should be collaborative. We and, want and, to and know. And he is a secretary of the yes. promoter. So, so but what, is, what, is, what this meeting is doing for us is that I always like to, um, tell us that we are all are here to learn we should, mm. there should be a take home of what we do we do after now yeah. we want to collaborate with, uh, with Alaba to build a system we can all sit down to have a conversation how to develop a system especially for us gospel music practitioners for yeah. how we can track and be sure that we're getting what we are getting now i did i did business with chocolate city um when the was released open doors they reached out to us beginning to distribute to cover the south south we were given that task and we had we i what i told them there was a copy of the city that was brought so it was also 500 naira specially produced pack very very beautiful pack and i said we can't sell this what we can distribute is one for 100 naira so give me rights to go to alaba to produce 2,000 copies. So I reached out to one of my marketers and we did that. Everywhere we distributed our music in the South South, we, we were sending mails to Chocolate City to mention the, the particular marketer, the particular shop, and how many copies. That's what we are talking about. You understand? So that's data. You need to be able to track. You need to be able to give reports regularly. So I think we need to have a conversation on how to develop that system. Thank you. OK. Um, I, I think I need to have one question concerning this concern a lot of people so what about the the part where um it makes is pirated so you are promoting a work and then it now happens that um is the everything in the market is not only coming from you there are several other persons who probably are not commissioned to push that work 
that are you know there so what what is anything you guys are doing i'm talking from the as as as, as a member of the leadership okay um when you talk about piracy is it if you're talking of the album then there's a problem okay but if you're not talking of the album then i think blessed are you that are pirating it <laughs> because the truth is <laughs> the truth is you paid me to promote your song yeah. now a lot of top artists a lot of top artists including mezi chino and uh, we're just two basically that was two. okay uh, is it reverse just two babies and i uh, contacted to promote ss love at first that was paid then over time some other songs as well over time it starts spreading 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 then there's a time it will come people that were not even paid will start promoting it because that time they're not doing it more out of demand so if you do a mixtape and somebody already taking your aunties and the person is not trying to promote it's not to promote the person is promoting it for you so it's all for your favor but if it's an album then there's a problem and yes in the market we have mechanism put in place we have a tax force and um right now we have um, a partnership and agreement with the cd producing company there are procedures right now so um, we can actually arrest anybody that is found pirating an album that is not contracted to market yes but if it's mixtape we don't disturb the person point okay um um, okay, I've been listening to my um, colleagues here. The truth is, um, we're in the digital age. You can't compare 2020 to early 2000s and early 90s. Everybody has a different mentality. I tell people, when you want to talk about change, it starts from the mind, your mental approach to anything you do. We're in the game of numbers. As far as gospel music business is concerned, is a numbers business. Yes, I remember if you say five, seven years ago, you end up seeing a lot of the A-list artists, gospel secular, they go to Alaba, they pay Alaba just to, for them to be able to spread their song because they know data is one of the most difficult things that we have in Nigeria. Not everybody have access to data. You know, you, we on the island might have access, but the local guys, the mainland they don't have access but the truth is yes as time goes on this thing began um, become to shift like people try to understand start saying the reason that okay it's a bad intellectual property i can't be giving out my song for free but at the same time there are still key people that needs this song now yes i remember you're talking about um the lady from chocolate city was asking okay how do you be, how can you measure for you to know the actual numbers of people that have this thing yes there is no Alaba promoters don't have this, and that's why you have a lot of them out of business because they can't actually give you data. My friend from Boomplay already said it. they have the data. Why? Because they've been able to work and be able to have the numbers, particular people and different regions that can be able to ascertain, okay, this is the people here that listen to your song. Now, the best approach I believe you can use to make this thing work is as an artist because they still go back to Alaba work with these promoters go to them okay yes i don't want to be paid i don't want the people to buy my stuff for free but at the same time i can give it out for free there's a way i can work with you and tell you okay i will print the jacket but as i'm printing this jacket at the back of the jacket i have the logos and a description that tells you go to the local streaming platform for you to be able to stream my song indirectly i'm winning people over there is something I'm selling. Even as you're seeing it, I'm taking it down to that area that they don't consume that about. Indirectly, they are going to get used to that. Through that way, you can be able to get more numbers to yourself. So digital has taken over. And I, I, I try to tell people, I preach gospel music business anywhere I go. Digital is just the thing. And we need to be used to digital. Like, you can't just say okay you're an artist a gospel artist and you don't have a numbers what are your numbers doing what are your social media numbers your instagram your twitter and other social media platforms you use how do you communicate how do you be able to turn these people into your real fan base for them to be able to now consume your song so you don't need to tell people let's forget about the approach of alaba we need to speak digital we need to start educating people how to be able to consume song digitally and the the top two local platforms we have in nigeria now is boomplay and udo x and boomplay has really done so well 
If you look at the last report, the top 10 artists, the most consumed songs on Boomplay, you have a gospel artist there. That shows that people really want this content. So I, if, if that's showing, I can't at the same time be promoting and telling people to go to Alaba to buy it. So no, these same people that are addicted to Alaba can still come back and be addicted to Boomplay app. Okay, thank okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we don't have time, but okay, I'm sorry, let's... I, I need to disagree a bit with what he said. <laughs> Our brother spoke um, about the advantages of using cheat mix. Yeah. See, I'm an advocate for using what you have, yeah, compared to where you are. Okay. Every form of advertisement is important, one is not more important than the other. He said one key thing, and I learned that through the Alaba mix, you'll be referred, you can get referred to go to the online digital platform. Yes. All they are all available and they are all important that we use them. Okay. Sometimes sometimes I travel. Yeah. Trust me, songs you no longer you feel is backward here. I hear it on the streets outside this country and people still jam to it. And so you know what? And it's from the Alaba mix. Do you know what? People that are actually buying are the, the grassroots. Okay. Maybe, okay. <laughs> maybe the, you guys don't understand what I mean. Okay, before I went for I said something. I said there's a way you can do this thing. You can be able to work with your promoters and tell them, I can have a new strategy on the best way for people to get access to my song. And I won't have that, you know, how I, I won't be able to sell it. Okay. Now, I said something that if I'm working with an Alaba promoter that designed the jacket, for me to be able to convert these same people that consume these Alaba CDs, I can be able to have the recent app that they are known for. This is also advertisement. It's also marketing. Have their logos well bold, you know, give a good description that they should be able to know that, okay, even though I'm getting this thing for free, this is the same place I can still have it. It's still for the good of the oh, gospel okay. artists. Okay. Do which you is, get? Which is so what he, he uh, yeah. Mr. Noah reiterated. Yeah. So, right. uh, yes, Alaba still have is important. But the truth is, they're, they're, see, I have a lot of Alaba markets. Okay, we, we, we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> we, we, we need to conclude. Thank you so much. Can you put hands together for our panelists? They have done a fantastic job. I believe you have learned so much, right? You have learned so much. So we're about to move to, so thank you, thank you, thank you, Sas, please. Thank you. So put your hands together for them as they go and sit down.